Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and we are working on the chapter 2 exercises group B and the only one that we have left to do is number 30 from those exercises um, and as always if you don't understand something watch the videos again uh, watch the theory videos if you still don't get it you know feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor so um, this problem says Allison Meehan has trouble keeping her debits and credits equal during a recent month, Allison made the following errors. So she made these five errors, A, B, C, D, and E. And it says, number one, for each of these errors, state whether Allison's mistake would cause the total debits and total credits on the trial balance to be unequal. So that's this, which is the effect on the trial balance. So that's number one. And then number two, identify each account with an incorrect balance and indicate the amount and direction of the error. Okay, so that's number two. All right, so... For A, it says Allison recorded a $900 payment by debiting rent expense for $90 and crediting cash. Okay, so as per the example here, okay, um, you know, her debits equaled her credits. So there is no uh, effect on the trial balance because even though the entry is wrong, your debits should equal your credits. But it should have been $900, okay? So for the rent expense, all right, you're, you know, if, if we needed 900 for the expense and only 90 was recorded, that means we're off by 100, 810. And that means our rent expense in that account is going to be too low, right? because it's only $90. It needs to be 900 and it needs to be much higher. So it's $810 too low. That's for the rent expense. Now for the cash, all right, our cash account is um, too high, right? Why? Well, think of it like this. Let's say I have um, $2,000 in the cash account. Okay, and I'm supposed to subtract out $900. That means I should only have a balance of $1,100 in there. Now, notice that I'm just making up this number 2,000. I mean, you know, this is just using the tools available. I could have made this, you know, I just picked the number 2,000. I could have picked a number, uh, say, 2,500. Or I could have picked a number 1,000. It really didn't. It really doesn't matter what number I pick, okay? Because um, you know I just need some basis in order to be able to make a judgment about the situation, right? So if I have 2,000 and I'm supposed to pay out 900, that means I should have $1,100 in the account, okay? Well, if I had a balance of 2,000 and I'm only going to credit the cash by $90. That means I should I have $1,910 in the account, right? Which means I have uh, $810 too much, all right? So my cash account is too high because I didn't take enough out of the cash account. So that's uh, you know how my account is misstated, all right? Um, my rent expense is $800, $810 too low, and my cash account is $810 too high. All right. All right, let's go on to the next one. So that was the example. Um, I had a look at it a couple of times um, myself in order to understand how the, the uh, problem is, is functioning here, how we're working with it. All right, so it says B, in recording a $700 payment on account, Allison debited accounts receivable and and seven hundred dollar payment. She debited uh, accounts receivable and then credited cash for seven hundred. Okay, that that was her entry, right? So my debits equal my credits because even if the entry is wrong, okay, as long as my debits equal my credits, right? You know that follows those technical rules. I mean, 
debits must equal credits regardless if the entry is wrong. So yes, my debits do equal my credits. So debits equal credits. Now for my accounts that are misstated, okay, in recording a $700 payment on account, right, um, if she's making, if I'm making a payment on account, my entry should be, you know, am I affecting cash? Yes. Okay. Cash is an asset, right? Is my cash increase or decreasing? Well, my cash is decreasing, so I'm going to credit cash for $700, right? Um, but what am I paying? I'm paying on account, right? Well, if I'm paying on account, it's something that I'm owing, right? And if it's something I owe, the account I'm using should be accounts payable. So I should have a uh, debit to accounts payable for $700. And that makes sense because if I had, and let me draw a T account here, if I have an accounts payable, and I'm just going to throw in a number here, um, let's say it's a thousand dollars, all right? That would be a credit, right? Meaning, you know, I owe a thousand dollars. Well, if I'm making the payment as a debit of seven hundred, okay, my balance is going to be should be three hundred, and that's right if I make the right entry, okay. But what if I make the wrong entry, okay? Now we notice that our uh, credits to cash are the same. So there's nothing wrong with our cash account, okay? So I don't need a T account. And notice I'm using the tool, uh, a T account. What I originally did was, is I made it for an accounts receivable, right? Now, if my balance in the accounts payable was 1,000 and I'm supposed to be paying 700 of it in order to have a balance of 300, and instead I used a $700 to accounts receivable instead of the accounts payable, well, what's wrong with my accounts receivable? Okay, well, my accounts receivable is $700 too high because I'm supposed to have a zero balance, right? That's what it was originally, right? If I had $700, I mean, zero is an original balance, and now I post this wrong, this portion of the wrong entry to it, my $700 is too high in my accounts receivable, and um, my accounts payable is too high by $700, right? Because it's supposed to be, you know, the balance is only supposed to be 300, all right? So my accounts payable is too high by 300, and my accounts receivable is high um, is too high by 700. I'm sorry, my accounts payable is too high by 700, and my accounts receivable is too, by, too high by 700, okay? Okay, so that's that one. Notice that I'm using various tools. I'm using the T accounts, and I'm also, you know, just uh, picking a number in order to give myself some kind of basis. You know, those are tools that you have at hand in order to be able to analyze situations. All right, it says here, Allison recorded the receipt of cash for service revenue by debiting cash for $230 instead of the correct amount of 320. Allison also credited service revenue for the $230 in $230 the incorrect amount. All right, so do my debits equal credits? Yes debits equal credits even though it's the wrong entry. Right? So we have a cash account and we have service revenue. Okay. Now um, I'm supposed to receive $320 in cash okay, which would be a debit. And that means I should credit service revenue for 320, right? Why? Because the entry, you know, says recorded the receipt of cash for service revenue, right? So my correct entry right, is, am I affecting cash? Yes, cash is an asset, and I increase my cash 
on the debit side. So I'm increasing my cash by 320. And I'm crediting service revenue for the 320. Okay. So that's what my entry should look like in the T accounts. Okay. Um, but instead of um, posting 320, I only post uh, posted 230. Okay. Well, that means that the difference between the two, which is $90, right, um, means my cash is too low, right? Because I don't have 320 in that account. I have 230. It's supposed to be 320. It's $90 too low, right? And for my service revenue, okay, um, you know, instead of having 320, the same thing. You know, it's posted on the right hand side. It's posted on the correct side, but it's only it's posted in the wrong amount. It's you know I have 320 less the 230, which is ninety dollars. So it's ninety dollars too low. Okay. So for my service revenue, it's ninety dollars too low. Okay. So notice, I mean, I did use the T accounts in order to be able to to you know look through that and do that but if you know that let me change the pen here you know if you know that oh i'm supposed to have a debit to cash and a credit to cash okay well if this is the amount i posted and this is the amount i i have that i should have in there meaning you know i only put 230 and i should have put 320 you know that tells me i'm 90 dollars too low and it's the same thing since i have credits for my service revenue and I was supposed to put two thirty I mean three hundred and twenty, but I only put two thirty in, you know, that difference is, is ninety dollars. So that's too low. Okay. I didn't have to use the T accounts in order to be able to uh, make that determination. Okay. I could have just gone through and looked at oh this it's, my cash is supposed to be a debit. Well what's the difference between the two? And my service revenue is supposed to be a credit, and what's the difference between the two? If it's supposed to be 320 and I only put in 230 in each one that's $90 difference you know too low in both of the accounts okay so that's C and D is Alan posted a $190 purchase of supplies on account by debiting Accounts payable for 190 and crediting supplies for 190. Okay, so this is the entry she made. You know, my debits equal my credits. All right, so that's fine. Debits equal credits, even though it's the wrong entry. And it says Alan posted, uh, Allison posted $190 purchase of supplies on account. Okay, well, let's think about what the correct entry should be, right? I ask myself the question, am I affecting cash? And in this case, no, because I'm purchasing supplies on account. So if I'm not affecting cash, my second question I ask is, am I affecting receivables or payable, right? And the answer to this is yes, because it's, you know, on account and I'm purchasing the supplies, so I'm... Uh, affecting accounts payable, all right? Well, if my accounts payable was zero and it just went up to 190, right? Is my accounts payable increasing or decreasing? Well, obviously it's increasing. And since payable, you know, is accounts payable is a liability account, we increase our liability account on the credit side. So I have a credit to accounts payable for $190. And that means I have to debit something else because debits must equal credit. So what am I going to debit? What is she purchasing? Well, she's purchasing supplies for 190. Okay. So if I have a T account and I have supplies and I have accounts payable, okay, and I'm supposed to have 190 as a credit to the accounts payable and 190 to supplies, right? That's what my entry should look like. Instead, if I had made 
a debit to 190, which was wrong for accounts payable, right? Well, the difference between those two, right, is I have to take 190 just to get to zero and then another 190 to get to the credit of 190. So I'm $380 too low on my accounts payable, right? Because remember, if I was at zero and I need to be at 190, but I'm down here at 190, this is credit and this is a debit. I have to credit, remember this is a debit, okay? In order to balance that out, I have to credit 190 to, to, in order to get to zero. And then I have to credit another 190 in order to get to the balance. So that 190 is, is just too low in that accounts payable account, right? And it's the same uh, with the supply account, right? Because I'm supposed to have a credit of, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to have a debit of 190, okay? But instead I have a credit of 190. Well, if I'm supposed to be at zero, okay, and I'm supposed to debit 190, right? but instead I was down here and I credited 190. In order to have this deb uh, credit wiped out, I have to make the same amount of a debit. So I have to take a debit of 190 just to get to zero and then add an additional 190 in order to get to the correct amount of a, de uh, of a debit of uh, 190. So I'm 190 plus 190, I'm $380 too low on my supplies, okay? You know, it's just the thought process, okay? Um, I use the T account. I would, you know, I'm using numbers over here on the side, right? But the reality is what I could have done is I could have said, okay, I know I'm supposed to have a credit of 190 here. And I have a debit here. Well, to get from the debit to get to zero, right, I have to credit 190. And that's just to get to zero. And then I have to get to the 190 here. So that's a credit of 190. So 190 and 190 is 380. And I do the same thing with my supplies. I have a credit, which means I need a debit, 190. And then to get to the debit, I need an additional 190, right? So I have to debit 190. So my supplies is too low because, um, you know, I'm starting out as a credit instead of a debit. Okay, I hope you understood that. If not, you know, uh, I mean, I, I showed it in like three different ways there on about how we, in order to get to that, you know, the correct uh, solution for that uh, requirement. And if you still have a question, feel free to, to, you know, watch it again and, you know, contact an instructor. Okay. Now, E, it says, in preparing the trial balance, Allison omitted a $95,000 note payable. Okay, so remember, on my trial balance, I have debits and I have credits, and they're supposed to equal, okay? So regardless of the accounts that I use, okay, and whatever the amounts, the total of these debits should equal these credits. Well, if I have, you know, if I'm omitting a note payable, so a note payable is a liability account, Okay. And the normal balance of, an, of liability account is a credit. So she should have had 95000 as a credit in the note payable. Well, if I'm supposed to have the 95000 and that means my, and that makes my debits equal my credits, okay, if I don't have the 95000 there because she omitted it, well then obviously my debits can't equal my credits. My debits are going to be greater than my credits. I mean, let's just throw in some numbers here. Let's say I'm supposed to have 200,000 in debits and 200,000 in credits. Well, if I don't have 95,000, if I omit it that much, okay, that means I only have 105,000 in credits, okay? So my debits are greater than my credits, right? Because I omitted I omitted that $95,000 credit for the note payable, 
Okay, and of course, you know, since if I look at the note payable account, if I'm supposed to have a balance, this is the T account for the note payable. If I have a ninety-five thousand dollar credit, that's what I'm supposed to have. Okay, if I don't have it, that means it's short, right? It's too low because its balance is zero. It's supposed to be ninety-five thousand on the credit side, so my note payable is too low by ninety-five thousand. Okay, now um, just as one aside here, you know it says in, it's saying in preparing the trial balance. Okay, but um, if you the reality is if you omitted a ninety-five thousand note payable, what ended up happening really is it um, that you omit it, you know, uh, the other half of the journal entry also, okay? You were supposed to have a credit for 95,000 for note payable, but what about the debit, okay? All right, you know, if you, if you omitted that part of the entry, most likely you did omit the debit side of that entry. And if you omitted that debit side of the entry, okay, then your debit still would equal the credits, okay? your debits would equal the credits because you just didn't make that entry, all right, for whatever the 95,000 was. I mean, if I had 200, if I'm supposed to have 200,000 and 200,000 and I omit it 95, okay, that means I have 105 on my credit side, but I would have also omitted 95 on the debit side, okay, which means I'd still have 105,000 on the debit side and debits would still equal the credits even though I'm missing that journal entry, all right? So, you know, in, in that case there, um, you know, what will end up happening is later on, you will, you know, events will occur in that, well, let's say, um, uh, you know, let's say on for that note payable, obviously, um, if you're uh, borrowing the money, right? That means you prob your journal entry would look like this, right? You'd have a debit to cash because you're going to receive cash, right, for ninety-five thousand, and then you'd have your credit to notes payable for ninety-five thousand. Okay, that's what the entry probably looked like, right? So, and if you did not make this entry, if you didn't post it, okay. When you got to your trial balance, your debits would equal your credits, and you think, oh, that's great, and that's wonderful, you know, I mean, my, my debits equal my credits. But the problem it will end up being is, is up here on your debit side, you're going to have a cash account, okay? And your cash account is going to have some balance, right? Right? Well, just looking at the trial balance, you don't know if that amount in the cash account is correct or not. What's going to happen is, is when you look at your bank balance, your bank when you look at your bank statement, okay, or if you keep a you know you keep a cash register, right, where um, you're you know you're tracking your cash, you know let's say your cash here on the trial balance ends up being say thirteen thousand dollars, well you're short ninety five, okay, your bank statement is going to say. 95 plus 13 or 108,000, okay? Your bank statement and your check register is gonna say 108,000, but your trial balance only has 13,000. Eventually, when you go to do this reconciliation of your bank statement, you're gonna see that there's a difference there and you're gonna go, okay, well, where's the difference? And that's when you're gonna pick up that you missed the entry, okay? That you just didn't post it. Uh, to your uh, ledger accounts, and therefore it you know wasn't reflected on your trial balance, even though your uh, debits equal your credits. Now the reason why I went through all of that is because of this issue with the debits equaling credits. Okay, you know the system is designed where even you no know, if you make a mistake, your and your debits equal your credits, that's fine. But eventually you will find the mistake that you made. Like in this case here, down the road, you're going to find out that when you go to reconcile your bank statement that your cash is not what you think it is because it's not on your books. And then you go back. So you can't, you know, you can't cook the books, okay, when you're uh, doing, you know, uh, the books of accounting, right? You know, if your debits don't equal your credit, 
if your debits don't equal your credits and you fudge to make you fudge a number to make your debits equal your credits you know that's going to stick out all right it, you eventually will, will come across it because the numbers just won't add up but if you omit an entry that you're supposed to have okay well your debits will equal your credits but later on down the road you'll still you know find that error because it doesn't balance someplace else so um, that's just a little insight into that and um, hopefully that I didn't take that too far beyond just you know addition, additional thinking um, as to what happens I mean this is me thinking about this all right when I'm reading this and I'm saying okay you're omitting 95,000 note payable I'm also saying okay well if that's a credit to note payable where's my debit Okay, so really this transaction was only like half of it, all right? But I can understand why it's it's there because they wanted to see if you knew the difference between debits equaling credits, okay? Um, uh, the, you know, understanding the idea of debits equaling credits. All right, so with that said, um, I'm done with this. You know, watch the video again if you have to. And in the next series of videos, we'll start working on the problems for the uh, chapter that were assigned in the digital study guide. Okay, so see you then.